So just for fun, let me uh, ask you on the topic of autonomous vehicles. It's the area that um, that I work at least these days most closely on, and it's also area that I think is a good example that you use is sort of uh, an example of things we as humans don't always realize how hard it is to do. It's like the the constant trend in AI, but the different problems that we think are easy when we first try them, and then we realize how hard it is. Okay, so why you've talked about this autonomous driving being a difficult problem, more difficult than we realize. Humans give it credit for. Why is it so difficult? What are the most difficult parts in your view? I think it's difficult because of the world is so open-ended as to what, what kinds of things can happen. So you have sort of what normally happens, which is just you drive along and nothing nothing surprising happens. And autonomous vehicles can do, the ones we have now evidently can do really well on most normal situations as long as, long as you know, the weather is reasonably good and everything. Um, but if some, we have this notion of edge case or, or you know, things in the tail of the distribution, mm -hmm. we call it the long tail problem, which says that there's so many possible things that can happen that was not in the training data of the machine that it won't be able to handle it because it doesn't have common sense. Right. It's the old, the paddle moved problem. Yeah, it's the paddle moved problem. <laughs> right. And so my understanding, and you probably are more of an expert than I am on this, is that current self-driving car vision systems have problems with obstacles, meaning that they don't know which obstacles, which quote unquote obstacles they should stop for and which ones they shouldn't stop for. And so a lot of times I read that they tend to slam on the brakes quite a bit. And the most common accidents with self-driving cars are people rear-ending them because they were surprised. They weren't expecting the machine, the, the car to stop. Yeah. So th there's, there's a lot of interesting questions there. Uh, whether, because, because you mentioned kind of two things. So, so one is the, the problem of perception of understanding of interpreting the objects that are detected right. correctly, right? And the other one is more like the, the policy, the, the action that you take, uh, how you respond to it. So a lot of the cars braking is a kind of notion of, uh, to clarify, there's a lot of different kind of things that are people calling autonomous vehicles, but a lot the L4 vehicles with a safety driver are the ones like Waymo and Cruz and all those companies they tend to be very conservative and cautious. So they tend to be very, very afraid of hurting anything or anyone and getting in any kind of accidents. So their policy is very kind of, that it, that results in being exceptionally responsive to anything that could possibly be an obstacle, right? Right, which, which, which the human drivers around it it's unpredict it, it behaves unpredictably. Yeah, that's not a very human thing to do, caution. That's yeah. not the thing we're good at, especially in driving. We're <laughs> in a hurry, often angry, and et cetera, especially in Boston. So, and then there's sort of another, and, and a lot of times that's machine learning is not a huge part of that. It's, it's becoming more and more unclear to me how much, you, you know, uh, sort of speaking to public information, because a, a lot of companies say they're doing deep learning and machine learning just to attract good candidates. Uh, the reality is, in many cases, it's still not a huge part of the of the perception. There's a, there's lidar and there's other sensors that are much more reliable for obstacle detection. And then there's Tesla approach, which is vision only. Mm -hmm. And there's I, th I think a few companies doing that, but Tesla most sort of famously pushing that forward. And that's because the LiDAR is too expensive, right? Well, I, I mean, yes, but I would say if you were to for free give to every Tesla vehicle, I mean, Elon Musk fundamentally believes that LiDAR is a crutch, right? Famously mm -hmm. said that. That if you want to solve the problem of machine learning, LiDAR is not, should not be the primary sensor, is the belief. Okay. Uh, the camera contains a lot more information. Mm -hmm. 
So if so if you want to learn, you want that information. But if you want to not to hit obstacles, <laughs> you want LiDAR, <laughs> right? It's sort of, it's a, this weird trade-off because, uh, yeah, it, it's sort of what Tesla vehicles have a lot of, which is really the thing, the pri- the the fallback, the primary fallback sensor is radar, which is a very crude version of LIDAR. It's a, it's a good detector of obstacles, except when those things are standing, right? The stopped vehicles. Right, that's car. why it had problems with crashing into stop fire trucks. Stop fire trucks, that's <laughs> right. So the, the hope there is that the vision sensor would somehow catch that and, and, and infer. So there's a lot of problems with perception. I. Uh, they are doing actually some incredible stuff in the almost like an active learning space where it's constantly taking edge cases and pulling back in. There's this da- data pipeline. Another aspect that is really important that people are studying now is called multitask learning, which is sort of breaking p- apart this problem, whatever the problem is, in this case, driving into dozens or hundreds of sp- little problems that you can turn into learning problems. So this giant pipeline that, you know, it's kind of interesting. I've I've been skeptical from the very beginning, but become less and less skeptical over time, how much of driving can be learned. I still think it's much farther than than the, the CEO of the, that particular company thinks it will be. But it it is constantly surprising that through good engineering and data collection and a- active selection of data, how you can attack that long tail. Mm-hmm. And it's an interesting open question that you're absolutely right. There's a much longer tail and all these edge cases that we don't think about, but it's this, it's a fascinating question that applies to natural language and all spaces. How big, how, how big is that long tail? Right. And, I mean, not to linger on the point, but what's your sense in driving in these practical problems of the human experience? Can it be learned? So the current, what are your thoughts of sort of Elon Musk thought, let's forget the thing that he says it'll be solved in a year, but can it be solved in in a reasonable timeline or do fundamentally other methods need to be invented? So I, I don't, I think that, Ultimately, driving, so so it's a trade-off in a way. Uh, you know, being able to drive and deal with any situation that comes up does require kind of full human intelligence. And even humans aren't <laughs> intelligent enough to do it because humans, I mean, most human accidents are, are because the human wasn't paying attention or the human's drunk or whatever. And not because they weren't intelligent enough. And not because they weren't intelligent enough, yeah. right. Uh, whereas the accidents with autonomous vehicles is because they weren't intelligent enough. They're always them. paying attention. Yeah, they're right? always paying attention. So so it's a, it's a trade-off, you know? And I think that it's a very fair thing to say that autonomous vehicles will be ultimately safer than humans, because humans are very unsafe. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of a low bar. <laughs> but uh, just like you said, the I, I, I think humans got a better rap, right? Because we're really good at the common sense thing. Yeah, we're great at the common sense thing. We're, we're bad at the paying attention thing. Paying attention thing, right. Especially when we're, bo- you know, driving's kind of boring and we have these phones to play with and everything. But um, I think what what's going to happen is that for many reasons not just ai reasons but also like legal and other reasons that the the definition of self driving is going to change or autonomous is going to change it, it's not going to be f- just i'm going to go to sleep in the back and you just drive me anywhere uh it's going to be more certain areas are going to be instrumented to have the sensors and the mapping and all of the stuff you need for that, that the autonomous cars won't have to have full common sense and they'll do just fine in those areas. As long as pedestrians don't mess with them too much. That's another question. (laughs) But um, I don't think we will have fully autonomous self-driving in the way that like most, the average person thinks of it for a very long time. 
And just to reiterate, this is the interesting open question that I think I agree with you on is to solve fully autonomous driving, you have to be able to engineer in common sense. Yes. I, I think it's an important thing to hear and think about. I hope that's wrong, but I currently agree, <laughs> agree with you that unfortunately you do have to have, uh, to be more specific, sort of these deep understandings of physics and yeah. uh, of, of the way this world works and also the human dynamics. Like you mentioned, pedestrians and cyclists are actually, that's whatever that nonverbal communication as some people call it, there's that dynamic that uh, is also part of this common sense. Right, and we're pretty, we humans are pretty good at predicting what other humans are gonna do. And how our, our actions impact the behaviors of, yeah. so there's this, this weird game theoretic dance that yeah. we're good at somehow. And we're, we're, the funny thing is, is, cause I've watched countless hours of pedestrian video, and talk to people, we humans are also really bad at articulating the knowledge we have. Right. Which has uh, been a huge challenge. Yes. 